Good afternoon everyone and welcome to another live interview from the European Parliament here in Brussels. European Gender Equality Week is an opportunity to recognize the barriers that women and girls face in almost every aspect of their life, but also it's a reminder of how far we have uh, come in achieving equal rights and equal opportunities. So this week, Parliament is holding a series of, de uh, of debates and events to, to address gender inequality. Um, you can check them in uh, their dedicated website. And, but Evelyn Rickner um, will give us more information about it. She's the Vice President of the Parliament in charge of the organization of the European Gender Equality Week. I'm Maria and yeah, uh, Ms. Rickner, <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to see Thank you. Thank you for, right for your time. And before we get underway with the interview, I would like our audience to send us their questions and comments and I'll try to put as many as possible to my guest in the next half an hour or so. So, Ms. Regener, this is the third European Gender Equality Week. Yes. What would the European Parliament like to achieve with it? What we want is visibility of the topic of gender mainstreaming. So, what is gender mainstreaming? It's simply to think whatever you're doing in politics, whatever you're doing in daily life, what is the effect on women, what is the effect on uh, men. And we just think of that and you just live another life, that's it. And we just do that uh, looking into the committees. So what does it mean, for example, gender mainstreaming uh, when you think about mobility? Who is using the public uh, transport and who is going by car? What does it mean when you're talking about who is getting uh, financing of uh, uh, um, a smart new uh, company? Is it the men? Is it the women? Why is more the men? And all this. And when you just dig deeper, you just find a lot of solution and it's really great what we learn. So you have just mentioned uh, gender mainstreaming, which is like including uh, gender in policies which are not focused directly on it. Have there been any progress on, on gender mainstream? Of course, otherwise <laughs> I would be desperate. I mean, um, just think of the RRF, the Recovery and Resilience Funds. I mean, 750 billion euro. I mean, that's a huge sum. And we, we would just uh, emphasize and insist that gender equality is enshrined. That means the member states who are right now trying to invest all this money have to ask I mean, is this money only for men? Is it also for women? For which, pro for, for which projects, for example, for childcare or what you need in order to make the whole, uh, the whole uh, economy resilient? And, and, and this is really, I mean, if you invest it in a good way, it's really a match. And besides that, what are um, some of the most important issues that Parliament is tackling this week and in general, well, yeah, in general during its, this term? So on gender equality, okay. on gender mainstream, yes. yeah, I mean, in the European Parliament, I really would like to say, uh, I mean, of course, we are confronted, like every other, uh, every other person, I mean, with a backlash we have in many countries at the national level and also with COVID, so somehow there is negative impact. But, and I really would like to talk about the good news, there is a lot of legislation ongoing dealing exactly with improving the situation of both men and women because gender mainstreaming means to look at both sides. So it's on pay transparency, we'll finish the women on board, so the quarter is coming. We talk about the carers, the carer strategy, which is so important, and of course, terrible topic we have to uh, go for violence against women so and all this on legislation I think that's already something you have just mentioned uh, gender violence um, does the European Union need a special legislation to com combating gender-based violence and intimate partner violence absolutely we need absolutely legislating legislation we need binding measures first of all we need the implementation of the Istanbul Convention that is a convention that simply says it is the task, a public task of the governments to care about women, to protect them, not to be uh, hit, for example, not to uh, experience violence. So that's the golden standard, we have to push that. And we need legislation and we've got it right now and we're negotiating on that, cyber violence. Mm -hmm. I mean, so many women are really exposed and therefore made calm. They don't there's many of those brave women, they don't dare to say a word anymore as journalists or as, as uh, courageous young, young women. When you have a shit storm that is uh, uh, even going wild and crazy and violent, so we have to, to do something about that. It's a crime. Violence against women 
is a systematic special crime and that needs to be taken on board on the list of euro crimes. Uh, you kind of um, mentioned it already, but there is a question from, from Clay on Instagram and he asked, is any EU legislation currently being draft, drafted to improve how EU legal system prosecute sexual assault? Uh, sorry, what do you mean by, by, by sexual assault? Um, I guess... Uh, or so somehow. <laughs> this is Simply kind of the question. To understand. I mean, um, I guess sexual when you, violence when, when, as well. Uh, we, we have right now uh, uh, a proposal from the Commission mm -hmm. on the table, which is important. So we as parliamentarians were heavily asking for that. I insist on, I mean, violence can be online, can be offline. Sexual harassment, I mean, this yeah, is also indeed. crazy. And when you are, for example, uh, confronted with, I don't know, porn, or uh, when you are confronted with sexual harassment, and it's all crime. So here, yes, we have you the proposal from the Commission right now on the table, and we're negotiating on it. And we ha just have to look at the specific gender perspective, because it's a, most of the time something else. Being a woman makes you more exposed. So when we th think of gender inequality, perhaps one of the most obvious um, issues that stands out to people is the gender pay gap. So what is the European Union doing to tackle this uh, gender pay gap? I mean, we have really to close that because everything else is crazy. We have in our EU treaty already for, I don't know, more than 70 years, equal pay for equal work and work of equal value. So we have to do something to close the, the, the pay gap between men and women. We have the legislation on the table, we're in the trilogues, and it is very important that, I mean, that every, every woman has the right, and not only the right, the accessibility to the courts to fight for the right, that we have uh, the, uh, the change the, of the burden of proof, so that it's not the woman who has to prove uh, that her colleague, her male colleague is earning more. And we, of course, have to uh, help that it's not coming to the worst case. So somehow the closing the pay gap means uh, transparent figures that companies have to do the job, that the governments have to go for uh, uh, this transparency, that you then take your works council support and go to your company chief and say, hey, uh, how I would like to compare my, uh, my wages, my salary, and then when you just see my colleague obviously uh, having the same qualifications, earning more, so then please uh, hurry on and, and catch up. So we really have this legislation on the table right now. Okay. Hold the fist. The presidency, the Czech presidency is very constructive. We really want to finish this as soon as possible. So, so hopefully. Good luck with it. <laughs> yes. Um, in what other ways can gender equality manifest and affect women and gender diverse people as well? I mean, we have to look at all sort of uh, inequalities that exist. I mean, being a woman and uh, somehow always being confronted with lower pensions, with uh, lower wages, exposed to harassment, carrying more or less the responsibility of looking after the children, the elderly, the ill one. I mean, that's already the majority, women. But many of these women are having uh, also the background of migrant background or uh, somehow social issues are also important so somehow when you're coming from a poorer background it's always more important to fight for your right than those uh, having a more uh, uh, a more let me say better financial background of course you have uh, all issues like LGBTIQ so somehow sometimes it's a double burden and we have to go to this uh, uh, intersectional components both in the uh, Pay Transparency Directive and, of course, everywhere, everywhere. Be it who is the chief, more diversity should be, should be in, and that's also part of gender mainstreaming, because gender mainstreaming yep. looks on the gender, but looks also what, what is the other background, so somehow there are more reasons to be discriminated. And after 10 years of delay, the Council has finally adopted the, the number of women on boards Yes, you would. Right, I saw that you were celebrating it on, in your Twitter account. So what does this mean for European women and, and what are the next steps? Yeah, I mean, this is really important. I mean, it's overdue. We have to say that 10 years of negotiating and pushing and again putting on the table, it looked like the council doesn't want it. But uh, we managed it and I'm really glad and I'm also proud for, I mean, there's also a, a women's thing Never give up, be a marathon runner. Simply don't give up and go for the issues. And I think this is 
so important uh, for both women and men that we abolish the male quota. It's the other way around. Now you just have networks and often non-objective criteria why men are getting into these top positions. And of course it has an effect because you look at the role models, who is on the top. So it is, it's good for the whole society. We heard it from Italy when they introduced the national quota. They said, great, the overall quality of company boards is going up. So it's a win-win for everybody. And it is especially right now important because we have so much backlash in many uh, member countries. Women are made more invisible, pushed a little bit out of, of great positions and uh, of what we have achieved. And therefore it's important to say, look, the European Union is doing something legally binding. You have to implement that. So somehow we really should celebrate that. And if I can ask, were there so many different um, between member states? Between I mean, members? you have different approaches. I mean, you have those uh, who say, women shouldn't be on the top <coughs> look in Hungary so somehow here on the boards it was even going down so it's also it's not only a rule of law it's also concerning women's uh, progress that is reflected um, and then you have countries that say we should do that with voluntary measures women are so great they do it because they are good but I just tell you something if we're going on with this speed we wait another hundred years and we don't want to so somehow, again, it's not on introducing uh, a, a female quota, it's just abolishing the men's quota via introducing objective criteria. So somehow take a little bit a rucksack of women they have to carry in order to, to make it to the top, top and uh, give uh, a little bit more balanced uh, possibilities for both. And more than ever, women are working, are doing like paid, paid work, but they still do most of the um, unseen and unpaid care work, like, including taking care of the children of the or, or of the older member of the family. So, how can unpaid or underpaid care work be tackled? A lot of work to do. Uh, I mean, the, closing the pay gap is already uh, one instrument, because also, especially young men, want a better work-life balance. I learned it again and again, it's both men and women to work, yes, but also to stay with family and friends and to have a good life. And when the pay gap is closed, it's easy for a couple to say, okay, let us better share. That's one, uh, uh, one thing, but of course it's only one piece of the mosaic. The most important thing is changing the mindsets. It's changing the mindsets that, for example, a man doesn't call uh, his woman when he says okay I do the shopping in the supermarket so I'm a brave man I do my <laughs> thing I go to the supermarket then calling from the supermarket please tell me what is missing in the fridge woman sitting in the in her job has to scratch her head think a little bit because she has a picture of the full fridge or the empty fridge it says okay I think I know we need some cheese and so on so somehow it's changing the culture does mean sharing but it means also sharing the responsibility, sharing uh, the mental load, sharing uh, to feel responsible of what has to be done when caring about kids, when thinking about what is missing in the fridge, what has to be done. And, and, and this we can do, for example, by sharing the same time the parental leave, because we know when uh, at the same time men and women stay in the same period at mm -hmm. home, this changes habits. So if you only just stay uh, with a little bit at home for the kids when we're small, you just maybe learn to bring down uh, the dustbin. But not that you change completely your daily life. And after a certain while, this helps. We have, as legislators, the, uh, the, uh, the, the job to, have, to create a better um, uh, frame. And this means equal earners, equal care strategy. Uh, that there has to be um, more childcare facilities that are really overall affordable and good quality to give an example and the same with elderly and uh, with uh, those being ill. So um, I'm going to do some of the questions <laughs> and comments of uh, our followers and well just to let you know there are many hellos from everywhere like European countries such as Spain, Portugal, Poland or Scot well, Scotland yeah. but even from Afghanistan. 
Uh, I saw in the program of the European Gender Equality Week that there is an event on Afghanistan. Um, can you maybe tell this um, follower who is uh, watching us from there what he I, can expect from you? I just say, I mean, I'm so proud of all these great women, but also men supporting Afghan uh, women, but also jumping over Iran. I mean, what we see there, fantastic. Uh, uh, resistance of strong women being supported by their brothers, sisters, friends. So somehow I just can tell them, uh, for us, Afghanistan is really in, in, in my heart and, and what is happening there because it's so tough. I got to know so fantastic female leaders being so strong and saying, okay, we stay there. We. Uh, we just uh, don't give up uh, the resistance and therefore what is the message to them is gender mainstreaming means doing foreign politics in the European uh, uh, Union is you, we always have to look at the situation of women in the respective countries and not only to look at them, to include them, to include the women leaders. You can't go there and talk to anybody being uh, uh, one of those terrible rulers of the Taliban without taking at the same time, at the same I hate, those female leaders on board and it's the same thing concerning distribution of goods and support uh, in, in camps and wherever people who are uh, fleeing. Uh, it always has to be taken on board what's the situation of women and again including them because they're brilliantly intelligent great uh, Afghan uh, female leaders and this is also our task as European Union wherever it is also with Iran yeah I was uh, gonna go to Iran now because uh, we also received uh, many questions about it and um, one of them Mo Moesini on Instagram is asking if Parliament has plans to support Iranian uh, protest we do that already. I mean, uh, as far, I mean, when we just learned that, I mean, the first thing was we, we just have to do a, a, a plenary debate in order to show the full uh, support of them and we have to explore further what to, to be done. You've realized sanctions of the European Union very quickly uh, 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 towards uh, Iran. Also, somehow it seems sort of uh, a systematic thing. Those who are, uh, attacking women and women who are expressing their rights. I mean, it's just normal things they, they would like to do, do sports, I mean, be in the streets, have fun, whatever. Somehow use also oppressive, suppressive means on concerning war. So from my point of view, it's almost a sort of an inner logic. Somehow this uh, support of uh, Iran towards Russia uh, uh, being aggressor and uh, uh, attacking the Ukrainian people. So somehow feminist politics in this sense means that we are supporting women, but we're supporting also the men who are supporting women. We're supporting those who are going on the streets and fighting for uh, a society with values, with values as we have in the European Union. So yes is the answer. Okay. Um, then uh, going to another question from one of our followers, Erkin Kamalov is saying, how to change perception of public on gender violence within a patriarchal society? Uh, difficult. <laughs> I mean, difficult I just say that right now, not as a vice president, but also as a a member of my party from the, uh, uh, from the from the socialist, we just start a campaign, yeah. And I think this is something every party and where whoever also with as parliament could use, taking pictures. I mean, showing a picture of a hand, a man in a glove, just uh, repairing a car, and then showing the same uh, uh, hand, also with a glove, also a strong man's hand. Uh, just taking a brush and cleaning the toilet. So if you're that strong that you can uh, repair a car, you are also strong enough to clean the toilet. And this is just one example. We have many other examples simply to show it's about sharing. I mean, uh, and sharing means we have to go for campaigns. I mean, simply to make it visible. Uh, and there are really great uh, campaigns existing and we have to go on with that but also, uh, of course, also going into legislation. And uh, I think that's what we're doing right now. Also, when we are talking about stereotypes, existing stereotypes that are existing, um, 
supporting everybody, um, doing rules on sexual harassment. I think, I, I don't, it's not only I think, I know, uh, I'm convinced he is like that, that Me Too mm -hmm. and the way we treat is a whole issue, that uh, sexual harassment uh, is part of all our daily lives. It's taking place in the film industry, it's taking place in the parliament, it's taking place in the sport world, it's happening uh, at universities. So somehow when you just open this box and make those visible who are suffering and those supporting them via measures, via trainings, mandatory trainings, for example, here in this house, pushing very much everybody should go for a training, then you just can improve the situation. Of course, it's never, it's just one tool, it's many tools, it's legislation, it's changing culture, and it's going also uh, really being proud, making visible all those fantastic people who uh, show what was going wrong. Yesterday we had, uh, a journalist, a Belgian journalist, who made a documentary uh, about her uh, personal case of being really uh, uh, stalked and, and, and uh, violated via uh, online uh, in, a, in a terrible way. And she, what was her reaction? She made a documentary on that. Mm -hmm. She made a film on that, giving the space and the room and the visibility to those women who would like to speak about that. When you do that, I mean, this is already a gorgeous, uh, a gorgeous input in order to pr improve the situation because everybody who sees them afterwards says, all these guys, they are, they are so perverse. So it's not an exception, it's a system. Yes, you already mentioned a few samples, but for those who are watching us, um, what can people in general do to help achieve gender equality? Like people who are watching us now. They can do everything. I mean, everybody can do a lot whatever you're doing think always what does it mean for men what does it mean for women simply ask this question and again i give an example uh, sweden um, in sweden it's snowing a lot yeah i mean in winter not now. <laughs> so and it's a question of the of gender mainstreaming i mean what does it mean for men when those being uh, responsible for cleaning the streets uh, from, from the snow ask this question because the plough who is removing the snow has to decide do we start with uh, the road where the cars are going or do we sa start with the sidewalk? Why? Generally in the morning when the, uh, the paws do the job they just uh, clean the street first mm -hmm. and it's more men driving by car to the work while I mean just not everybody but in general it's like this while women having the kid on their hand okay. going to the kindergarten and accompanying to school before before also going to their job so somehow of course when you ask this question it means let us remove first the, stro uh, the snow from the from the sidewalk where the pedestrians are going and then to go to the road and this is just a simple everyday question you can do that wherever you are when you're just sitting in the in the tram as a as a as a young guy and you're just sitting like this you can just can ask yourself i mean does a woman feel comfortable with you just simple and do man spreading i mean simply ask daily questions sometimes in your behavior that's it and i think with this i mean nobody's perfect of course of course we're doing all uh, uh, a lot of mistakes but with this we can learn from each other because Gender mainstreaming means also learning, not only men learning from women, it means also uh, women better understanding classic men's behavior okay. and then change our, our habits. Yeah. So thank you. I think they are very useful examples <laughs> which everyone can apply. Um, I remember when I first interviewed you, it was um, online because we were stuck at home. Yes. <laughs> so indeed, during the pandemic years, everyone's mental health was tested and tried. Why is caring for mental health so important during those challenging times, and especially from a gender perspective? I mean, why? It is a basis for democracy that people are not getting crazy and, and, and suffering. It is the basis of, of health that you also uh, are in good shape concerning mental health. It's 
at the basis of somehow feeling comfortable in your skin, so it's, it's extremely important. And I think this is really an issue present right now, but will be present also very, very long. I think that's one of the most important health issues in the upcoming decades. Um, I, I launched um, a project, uh, a, a pilot project for myself, because not on mental health, on loneliness. But loneliness and mental health are very much interlinked because who is lonely? I was just looking, just with this experience, what did COVID, this a lot being alone or somehow living a complete, di alone means uh, without support from outside, so somehow in a, in a difficult mental situation. What does it make especially with young people and what does it make with women? Uh, I just asked that and launched this project because um, violence against women was going up. Mental health, I mean, is one thing is uh, mental health, I mean, if, and the other thing is, I mean, just everything else. So somehow <laughs> to be also physically uh, uh, healthy. And when mental health is not only a, a topic for young and for women, it's also for men an issue. And when the mental health of men is getting crazy, women are suffering. So mental health is a huge issue uh, we, we, we have to tackle, to tackle. And uh, we just, I would say, in very much in the beginning, but what we need is far more data and far more uh, psychological help at schools, first of all. I really think in this regard, not only of women, but also of those uh, somehow, I would say, having suffered the most, being young and, 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 and having been exposed the most uh, to deal with it. So there can be a lot done, but we're just still very much at the beginning. Mm -hmm. We need more medical staff, that's clear. We absolutely need more medical staff. So I think this is really a, a, a good job uh, uh, idea for those uh, thinking what they should do mm -hmm. professionally. Before you said that in order to achieve gender equality, um, we had to change mindsets. So would you say that younger generations are more concerned um, regarding gender equality? And also, how is uh, social media promoting feminism? I mean, social media doing a lot to the good, but they're also doing a lot to the bad. I mean, I think many of us being in social media and uh, putting on feminist uh, uh, content, somehow just get like a, like, like a hit in the face. I mean, all these uh, crazy uh, 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 comments from, from trolls. So it's really also, I really would like to, to, to say we have to do something legally against this danger of democracy, this danger also of uh, integrity of women's personal rights uh, against uh, these attacks that are existing. So, um, I mean, there are good things happening, but unfortunately also very bad ones. Yeah. So my last question would be, what advice would you, be, would you give to young women who want to succeed as a leader? My dear, mm -hmm. do networking, go for gangs. I mean, really, don't stay alone for young, uh, for young women. It is very important to look where is my role model, but also where is my uh, space, my safe space, in order to exchange, in order to help each other, to give the hands, to build the networks, to make each other strong. And don't forget the boys and don't forget the men. They're, on, they're not bad. To your last question, of course, Young men, they also want work-life balance. I really hear that all the time. They, 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 most of the younger people, they're fed up with uh, yeah. the uh, classic uh, picture of the society. So for, for really for young women, my advice is really, um, don't think it's done. You have to fight for that. Uh, and it's really a tough fight, but um, together, I mean, really, in groups, in parties, in whatever, in, in, in whatever, be it in sports or wherever, have fun as well, uh, uh, you, you re really can change a lot. So, Ms. Rigner, thank you very, very much for your time. I hope that this week is a success.
and for those who are watching us, thank you for tuning in once again. Have a good afternoon and don't forget to, to see the events of uh, the European Gender Equality Week in our dedicated website. Thank you and have a good afternoon. Thank you so much and thank you. <laughs> thank you.